Hey y'all. Okay. I'm so excited about this because I'm excited to do it and I'm excited to bring you along for the ride. I'm going to build another custom palette into this big square tart palette. And for this one, I'm inspired by Terry Barber, and I'm going to put a couple of pictures up on the screen as I'm talking of his Instagram account, what he's supposed to do his Instagram account. He's a makeup artist, and he has all of these beautiful stuff inspired, like yucky stuff inspired eyeshadow looks, primarily sooty, cigarette ash, barbed wire, burnt chicken kinds of inspired eyeshadow looks, like grungy to the max. And I have been inspired to collect all of the single eyeshadows and then anything that I can kind of like pop out of my Natasha Denona palettes, all of the eyeshadows that might lend themselves to the recreation of those kinds of looks, playing with those kinds of looks and just like experimenting with that aesthetic to collect them all into one palette that will just be at my fingertips and that I can use for makeup playtime going forward with this inspiration. Terry Barber also though has a number of pictures up on his Instagram of different kinds of pretty editorial, simple looks. So some of them are just, you know, a wash of barely there matte color all over the eye. And then there are some that's like a structural shape of pretty bright, bold, matte pastel pigment all over the eye. And I'd like to include some shades that lend themselves to those kinds of looks in this palette as well, so that I can play in that direction as well without having to always get out my big palettes where I keep my singles and just dig through and be distracted by everything. I want it to be this like pretty robust but curated Terry Barber Playtime palette. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Hannah. I enjoy makeup a lot and so I do sometimes review new makeup that's come out on the market, but I really like to use what I have. So I also do a lot of content like this where I'm taking inspiration and then dipping back into my existing makeup collection to act on that inspiration. And if that sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe. Let's go ahead now and get into the meat of this video. So right now I'm keeping my square single eyeshadows in this palette on the left and I'm keeping my round single eyeshadows in this palette on the right. And when I build palettes of singles, I also take advantage of the fact that my Natasha Denona palettes are designed for the eyeshadows to be removable and I pop them out and use them as singles too. Let's start with that in mind with the square ones. Actually, I'm going to keep this on the side so that I have like space to move the shadows around on the table. And at the end, I'll put them all in the palette. And I might also end up pulling more things than will fit in the palette. I'm going to go straight for everything that's sooty in any way, especially like the really straight up blacks and browns, of which there aren't that many in this palette. This is mostly kind of colorful and, you know, really bright shades and duochrome, like really exciting duochrome shades. There are some really awesome looks though with green on Terry Barber's page, kind of close to the top right now. Some like vegetable greens, satin greens, broccoli greens, bean greens. And I think that he, he'll often use a matte and then like an eye gloss. He uses mattes to great effect. And you guys know that I really love shine and I don't use my matte eyeshadows very often. This is one of the only times in my life I've ever felt really inspired to try to use mattes to create the kinds of looks that I like to wear. So I'm gonna pull some of these matte greens and khakis. This really looks like the kind of shadow that I feel like Terry Barber would use to do one of those all over the lid looks. And then some of these really subtle, just barely there washes of matte color that I'm seeing. I feel like some of these adept mattes would work really well for that. I don't know if I want to pull yellow in. I don't want it to really be a colorful palette. I just want to have some options for playing with that kind of thing. Some of his grungy, sooty 
looks do lean kind of like red, like flushed red, almost like an irritated red eye underneath. I feel like something like that could really serve that type of look. And I am gonna go ahead and pull this really intense matte white. Let's stick with that for now, although I might return to this. Okay, I feel like I have more options for the grungy type stuff, like the cigarette ash glossy lid look. This is one of my all-time favorite shadows. It's from the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. It's called 365 and it has some silver micro shimmers in it. So it retains this really kind of damp, creamy look on the lid. And I feel like that's a good alternative to eye gloss. And a lot of the pictures on Terry Barber's Instagram, the, one that I'm, the ones that I'm inspired by, they have that look, like the, the lid looks wet underneath the shadow or the shadow itself looks wet. And I think that that will really work to create that kind of effect. This right here is Makeup Geek Steampunk. It looks almost exactly the same as this one in the pan, but I know that they swatch really differently. Steampunk is a really, really dark, almost like purple leaning brown. And 365 has this kind of ruddy, again, glossy look to it. There's Steampunk and there's 365. So. Now you can see they're actually really quite different. And I think both of them are perfect for this palette. Steampunk actually has a lot of black pigment in it, kind of like purple, blacky, bruised pigment. You really see it come through when you start to clean up. Like when I was wiping the swatch away from my hand, suddenly it sort of started buffing out to look kind of bruised around the edges. And again, I think that that's perfect for my purposes in building this palette. I'm so tempted to pull these metallics, these kind of like neutral metallics, but um, that's what I always do. Like I always use these kinds of shades all over my lid. And again, I feel like what I'm seeing, what I'm inspired by from Terry Barber is that instead of just a straight up metallic, it's like a lot of matte with maybe some shine, like some little bit of gloss on it, like a kind of, uh, like an old leather finish on it. And I feel like to get that look, I have to build with mattes and then maybe use a little bit of shine at the end. But uh, I don't wanna pull too many of these kinds of shades that I always default to because I'm trying to push myself in a new direction. This will probably be a good addition though. This is a metallic, but it's again, it's like a really grungy kind of dank feeling metallic, like metal, like it's not a metallic shadow, it's like a metal, I mean, it is a metallic shadow, but what I'm trying to say when I use the word metallic is it's metal-lick, like evocative of metal. And uh, there's a lot on Terry Barber's page like that, like looks inspired by safety pins, by other kinds of like metal hardware. So I feel like this is actually another one that's kind of exactly perfect. And I wonder about this one. Yes, the same thing. So this is like the same thing, but even less shiny. Perfect. This is a Depotted Juvia's Place shade, and this is an old Sephora collection shade, number 56. Hmm, I wonder about this one right here. This is ColourPop Tinker Time, and uh, this is the kind of metallic shade that I tend to go for, but it's a little too light for me. I feel like because I have hooded eyes, a lot of times I think I'm gonna like a thing like this and then I put it all over my lid and I'm like, oh, it's not showing up. But again, like there are these beautiful looks on Terry Barber's page of just like a wash of barely their color. Like you can barely tell that it's makeup and looking a little bit glossy or just a little bit metallic. I feel like this is gonna be that for me. And I do really like how neutral this is. It's almost like a slightly green leaning gray, like just a little bit sage. This is it, this is exactly it. Scrolling through the Instagram account, which I have pulled up uh, on my computer next to me, there are a number, so the direction I haven't really gone in here yet, that there are a number of looks representing on the page is this kind of direction, like this sort of like bright, and, and there are a number of looks that revolve around like a bright lipstick and then there's an eyeshadow that matches it. So like this kind of thing, this kind of thing, this kind of thing. And I leaned away from too much of this 
pinky pink when I was picking from the square shades. I think I don't wanna quite go there. But I wonder if something like this, which looks a little bit more, you know, if it's all over the lid, it looks a little bit more striking, a little bit less just like a standard makeup choice and a little bit more sort of sickly in that lovely way, you know what I mean? Like a little bit more like a rash maybe on the eyes. That is something I think I do want to include in the palette. So this is ColourPop Meteorite and this is ColourPop Martian, and they are two shades that I really love and that I've been wanting to use more since I decluttered my singles. So I'm gonna go ahead and include them. And they're also really good choices because Martian in particular, well, I think that Meteorite is matte. It looks like it has a little bit of, of a glimmer, but I think it's just that some glitter from another shade has <laughs> fallen onto it. Um, it's a matte. But Martian has some micro shimmer in it and it doesn't make it glossy, but it makes it, I think, a little bit satin, just a little bit ever so slightly, not quite a pure matte. And I love that for this palette. Martian's there on the left. Meteorite is the brighter one on the right. Okay, I don't have a navy uh, and I don't have a yellow. I, and there are a number of really cool, like eggy, <laughs> eggy and other like yellow food inspired looks on Terry Barber's page. Um, it's hard because if I were to just go on color, like if I were just picking, you know, all the colors that he uses, he uses every color. The Instagram account, his aesthetic or his project that he's doing on Instagram, the aesthetic is so specific, like really particular and everything really hangs together. But in terms of the colors, the range is vast. He, he like uses everything, he uses every color. And I don't wanna just end up with a rainbow palette. So part of the way that I'm making sure that I kind of keep it focused and make sure that the palette is truly inspired by him and by his work is with finish, right? I'm just keeping it to these like satin mattes and like satiny shades. Um, but I also think that for it to really inspire me particularly, I want it to kind of align with my memory of his work. Like when I think about his work, I really think about these blacks and browns and like metal, metal ick metal inspired shades and i think about these kind of like flat satiny mattes in these kinds of colors especially like this kind of color um, and i do think about these flushed like lipstick inspired eye looks the yellows though they are a presence on his page i don't think about them as much and i feel like if i start to add them in i'm going to get too much something that feels too much like just a rainbow and it's going to kind of like start working at cross purposes against the inspiration that I'm seeking. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave yellow out for now. Let's take a look at the Natasha Denona shades and see if there's anything in there that will work with what I have. Okay, here in the Lila palette, this is a very Terry Barber shadow to me. And you know, I don't, See, I, I really like these two mattes. I really like the quality of them, but they don't really make me think of Terry Barber. Maybe this one, it's a little less purple. And actually maybe these mattes here, maybe like this one, and maybe even this one. Although even though there are some beautiful looks in this color family that I've seen on the page, kind of like yellow, I don't think I wanna go there for this particular palette. I wanna like make it approachable to me. Yeah, scrolling through, I see a lot of reds that are like the red of meat or the red of sauce of some kind or like the brown of, of sauce or uh, the red, like the red of a sunburn or the pink of some kind of, of like commercial rubber product, you know what I mean? Um, and I do feel like I have a lot of that represented here. I don't really see, even though there's a lot of like cigarette ash, I don't really see a lot of anything that leans mauve. It's like, there's not much purple represented, at least not in what I'm looking at. And I don't think I wanna include anything like that in here, but it's making me wonder if I want to build this out with some of those like reds of meat or red like um, reds of sauce, like ketchupy reds a little bit more than this. Though I guess I do have this. And I think that this is more like it than something like this, which is 
uh, more like a metallic cranberry. I really love these mattes from the Lila palette, but I just, I don't know if they are fitting with kind of like what I've been imagining I want to do with this source as an inspiration. Maybe one of them though, maybe like this more mid-toned one. I'm going to pull that one out for now. And actually up close like this, this middle shade is actually kind of looking like it could work with everything, especially like looking at the inspiration, thinking about the looks. It could like work together with this shade to get something kind of more dimensional. But let me see if I have something else that I think would be more the thing. Include that one for now. I think I do want to include something like this, but I don't want it to be a duochrome. And this one has a little bit of duochrome energy about it. So I'm gonna look in my singles again for something kind of like that. But I do want to include something like that's a metallic sibling of these guys, but that's like a little bit more cherry, like a little bit more in the middle of the red spectrum. But that's gonna be it, I think, from Leela. Ah, I feel like this beautiful cream to powder python, that could give me the kind of like navy or Prussian that I'm seeing much of. And I wonder, mm, I feel like this is too pretty. I'm gonna pull out the brown for now. These mattes are so creamy, it's really tempting not tempting to pull them out. And um, I think I'm actually gonna also take this one that is like a it's like a pale camel on me. Again, in the interest of having that like barely there wash all over the lids, like the the color that almost doesn't look like makeup, like no makeup makeup, and then maybe like a really bright, shiny lip with it, or a really bold, spiky, clunk, clumpy lash or something. But we'll see, if these don't fit, if everything doesn't fit, these might be some of the first to go. I feel like they've added possibility, but without really changing the color story too much. And that's kind of like what I want. I really like the vibe right now, but I wanna have as many options as possible. So let's look for that kind of like shiny meat ketchup dimension. I don't think it, I see it here. Mm, I think maybe this and maybe, although that does feel like it's changed the color story, it's added more of the rainbow in. And again, I don't think I want to do that right now. I want it to be like a sibling of this and this and these. So maybe something like this is kind of like the color that I was looking at before. I think I just want one, and I, I feel like this one is the kind of, it's like the sort of rashier, bloodier one, and this one's like the more makeup color. So I'm gonna go with the one on the left here. And then the other thing, the other question that I had about these was whether I should pull this other kind of matte Prussian blue, but again, I feel like that is adding too much, like watering it down by making it too many different options of the colors of the rainbow. I'm gonna put these into the palette and see how they look and then, yeah, and see if I want to build it out more, like see if I wanna add more, because I don't know if these are gonna entirely fill the palette and I don't know if I want it to be completely packed like wall to wall. But if I do, I think I might just build it out with some more neutral mattes. But let's see.
Okay, so this is definitely going to work out in terms of space. Like I think just having like a, a kind of loose five by five is perfect for me. But I don't like that they're all now like in rainbow order because it's making it look more aggressively rainbow. And I do want to get two more out. So I'm going to get two more kind of like basic grungy neutrals. I'm going to try not to expand the color options by very much in terms of like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Like I'm not going to add in something more blue or more purple or something. I'm going to add two more neutrals and then I'm going to mix them around a little bit so that they're not so rainbow ordery. This is one that I was considering including towards the beginning. I'm gonna grab this too from the gold palette. Even just putting those up in the corner makes it feel less ostentatious. I just, I think I want to separate, makes it feel less ostentatiously rainbow. I just, I think I want these greens to like be in their own little corner together and these reds to like be in their own little corner together. And let's put the blues kind of down here near the more charcoal-y colors. Let's put this white next to the black. So it kind of feels more utilitarian and less like a rainbow. Okay, I still feel I'm surprised by how rainbowy it ended up looking. Although I, I, as I was saying, you know, Terry Barber does use like the entire rainbow of colors in his work. It's just that individually each look feels so much more grungy and in many cases kind of monochromatic. And I definitely will be able to build those kinds of looks from this. I just, I feel a little bit worried that I'll be like distracted by the rainbow aspect and wanting to add more than one color in. But you know, I'll just stay focused on what I'm trying to do. I wonder if I took out, well, I don't want to take out these greens because I really loved those broccoli looks and I want to try some looks like that. Um, this is for all intents and purposes, what I have been trying to do. And um, I think that it's going to be amazing. I also, I'm not going to swatch the whole thing like in one long row down my arm to show you what the palette looks like swatched. Because again, I'm not planning to build looks that are inspired by like the color story of the palette. I'm planning to use the palette as a resource to build specific looks that are inspired by this one artist. And these are the kinds of colors that I observe him to use for those kinds of looks, but it's gonna be like one little group at a time. So I'll swatch out a couple of little groups for you. So for example, I could see myself making a look with just these shades, right? And I could see myself making an entire look, maybe with this one and this one, and then maybe like a little bit of this brown, like sort of three different shades of brown. I'd like to experiment with putting like just this shade all over the lid and just have it be like a matte eye just in that shade, or just this shade all over the lid and have it be like a matte eye with just that shade. And then I could see myself doing like uh, this all over the lid with maybe a little bit of this to kind of like add dimension, but it would like mostly be just this like green look. And then of course these beautiful kind of like bloody meat colors that I'll be doing <laughs> some looks with. So that's kind of what we're talking about. It's like a bunch of different looks that are inspired by these little arenas. Okay, it's time for me to go. I have done what I set out to do and the baby just woke up from the nap. So it's about to get kind of noisy in here. I am going to 
probably actually immediately start playing with this on my eyes. <laughs> and maybe I'll do a follow-up video in which I actually play with it on my eyes and uh, just like experiment with this palette and, and these kinds of looks together with you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was so much fun for me. And you know, this is different. The, this inspiration is like different, not the grunginess, but the fact that there are all these mattes and not a lot of like duochromes and, and no glitter and the metallics are all very kind of like satin and muted. That's different for me. And so it is exciting to be excited by something that is new. New to me, but not actually new makeup, not actually stuff that's new to my collection, just a new direction, a new way of thinking about what I can do with what I have. Again, thank you so much for being here and don't forget to take extra good care of yourself today because that's what'll make you the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.